Young Chuck sees that AI is the new gold rush. Everyone is jumping on it, so he tries as well. But the competition is more fierce than ever. Everyone is using OpenAI to build projects and businesses. But the last cut bender is different. He also started with OpenAI, of course, but he then went deeper. He dived into new realms to get the edge. That's when he discovered the power of open source AIs, and he's using them to build what no one else is building. Young Cut Benders, my name is Zorbek, I'm a senior software engineer at an AI startup in New York City and on this channel I teach you how to use AI to stand out as a developer and build cool stuff. In this video we're gonna see how to use open source AIs to build cool projects with the goal of getting rich in the AI revolution. During my research on this I discovered a very interesting document, it's allegedly a leaked document, internal document from Google, where they say that open source models will win over time, they will win on Google, they will win over open AI due to the collection efforts of vast amounts of engineers and this is very interesting because they see that they will literally outcompete the two biggest players in AI right now which is OpenAI and Google and there is one passage in particular that really surprised me is this one open source models are faster and more customizable more private and pound for pound more capable they are doing things with hundred dollars and 30 billion parameters that we struggle with at 10 million dollars and 540 billion parameters so this really blew my mind and this caught my attention so open source models truly are very powerful and have a huge amount of potential so i want to test that which one do you think out of those three images all of them were generated by ai but which one do you think was generated by an open source model i want to see if you can distinguish the difference open source models are free easy to use they're customizable two out of those pictures are generated by private like closed source models that are paid which one do you think it is it's actually the one in the middle. The one in the middle is the one that was generated by an open source model. This one was generated by Dolly. This one here on the left was generated by Midjourney. So open source is truly catching up. And you can see here on this plot as well, it's a plot about the accuracy of some language models. And you can see here are humans at 83.9%. GPT-4 is 85.5%. And look at this Llama 2 70B model is super close to GPT-4. And Llama 2 is an open source model, which again is very, very interesting. So now, you're convinced about open source models. You want to explore this, you want to use it to build your next project. Where do you find those open source models? Well, the go-to place to find those models is Hugging Face. And I'll be honest, I knew about Hugging Face for multiple years now, but I always ignored them because I thought like, what a weird name it is, like Hugging Face. What kind of name is that? And then that logo and everything, it just, I thought it was super sketchy and kind of lame also, I'll be honest. But I started to change my mind recently when I started working on this project, this AI project, which is a children book a custom generator. To build it, I actually used open source API called Replicate. It's a replica Replicate hosted an API for Stable Diffusion, which is an open source model. And I was like, man, actually, those models are very interesting and allow you to do very interesting things. And then I had a student who built an app also using an open source model on Replicate, which was like this custom QR code artistic generator. He was doing like QR codes that look like pizza or like cities or stuff like that. So this is very interesting. And that made me dive deeper into open source models and try to understand what is possible to achieve with them. By the way, quick side note, if you like these projects that you saw and you want to build AI apps that look similar to this, the pre-order for my bootcamp is closing soon. So if you're interested and you want to join, go to lastcommentcom slash bootcamp. So as I continue my research into open source, that's when I stumbled again on Hugging Face and I decided to give it another shot. And honestly, I was mind blown by the types of things that are available there and just the types of projects that you can build. We're going to cover this very quickly. You can think of Hugging Face as the GitHub of AI, which is a pretty big statement, but it's actually fairly justified because the amount of models they have is absolutely insane. We're going to check that very soon. But to get started, if you want to start building a project with Hugging Face, you basically just create a Hugging Face account, get your API key, find training models, find a trending model that you like, pick it, install the Hugging Face dependency, and then run just a basic example to get started. And from there, you can build more and more complex projects. So let's check a few models right now. I'm going to click on this link. It's going to open this page. And then you see a list with a bunch of different models. Look at this 15,458 pages of AI models that are available. And you have models for everything. You have multi you have multi-models, computer vision, natural processing, languages, audio. You have a ton of stuff. So for example, if I click here on text to image, you're going to find different AIs that are available here that serve like custom purposes. So here you have a model for stable diffusion, but then you also have other models for very specific things like this one, for example. This is like a, 
I don't know, like a spaghetti image generator. And this is very interesting because those models are trained for very specific purposes. And for your application, this might give literally better results than using Doll E or another like paid closed source API. So you have a ton of things in there. You have audio as well. You have text classification. You have literally anything that you can imagine it's available there. One thing though that you're going to encounter when you start building apps with Hugging Face is the concept of inference. You will see this keyword in a couple of functions and some packages that you'll need to import in your apps. Inference is the process of applying a trained machine learning model to new unseen data to make predictions or decisions. I like this diagram actually to represent this. The first row here is the training. So you use a bunch of data, a bunch of images of like people, bicycles, strawberries, for example. You have a lot of labeled data that you use to train your neural network. And then that network, that model is able to make predictions based on it, is able to recognize those patterns, right? But what happens if you give it an image that it has never seen before? So you give an image of a bicycle that it has never seen before. It has, it has seen other bicycles, but it has not seen this one. And inference is when it's able to actually predict and accurately determine what what it is like new unseen data it's able to know that it's actually a bicycle so now what i want to do is i want to give you a quick example of an app that we can build with hugging face so i'm going to zoom in a little bit so what we're going to do now is we're going to build a little translator app that takes text and just translates it in different languages so first you're going to import the dependency and then you're going to create an instance for hugging face then you're going to create start a function we're going to translate text right that's the goal of this little example we're going to translate this text so i'm printing it here then on this instance i'm going to call the translation function I'm going to provide it a few parameters. I'm going to provide this model. So this is a model for translations. I'm going to provide the input, which is the text to translate, and then parameters, which is the language. This is the source language, and this is the target language. So I want to translate text from English to French. Once I get the response, I extract the translation text field from it. I print it, and I return that. So we're going to be just calling this function with this text. The text I'm using here is you're watching a YouTube video about artificial intelligence. So let me open a new terminal and I'm going to run this file. So it shows me the text to translate. Now you have to wait a few seconds and then it's going to show like the, the translated text in French. So here we have it. This is the translation. Vous regardez une vidéo sur YouTube sur l'intelligence artificielle. If I want to translate this in Russian, so I'm going to change the target language from French to Russian and I'm going to run the script again. Let's see what it gives us. Here we have it. This is a translation. We smothered the video on YouTube or Iskusim Intellecti. So this was just a quick example of how you can use the Hugging Face interface to build like something very simple. But obviously you can go ahead and build way more complex apps using the different models that they have available to make very unique projects specific to to the use case that you have. I hope you enjoyed this video. And now if you want to know six unique AI projects that you can build as a beginner, check out this video right here.